This is a short video about jump discontinuities. So let's say you've got a function whose domain is some interval. And so in this video, it could be closed interval or an open interval, or maybe it's got a bracket and a parenthesis, who knows. But let's say that my function f is increasing on this interval. And let's say that I have some point in that domain, call it c. And let's assume for right now that c is not an endpoint of this interval i. So the new concept is we're gonna define what's called the jump of f at c as the following. So it's kind of got function notation. J stands for jump. This little subscript f means I'm talking about this function f. And I'm telling you about what input of f am I considering at c. And so what the jump of f at c is, it's just going to be the difference of the right-hand limit minus the left-hand limit of my function. And so in a picture here, again, I'm assuming that this thing's increasing. Therefore, this should be positive. Right, the right-hand limit should be bigger than the left-hand limit since my function's increasing. So in general, maybe it looks something like this. So all I'm saying is this vertical distance in red between these, right, that jump, like it's kind of intuitive to call it a jump, I hope. I'm just saying that that number is what we'll call the jump of f at c. And so, by the way, though, if it is the case that maybe this point C, maybe it is like a left end point of your interval here, the jump's pretty similar. In that case, the other points in your interval to the right of A, so you'll just do the right hand limit as X approaches C. I guess that should really be an A there, shouldn't it? Um, from the right, uh, that minus F of A. And you could do similar kind of thing. If it happens to be, if you're talking about the jump at your right end point of your interval, call it B. So again, this should be a B right here. So F of B should be the tallest point on the graph since your function's increasing. Therefore, the jump of F at B should be F of B minus the uh, left hand limit of your function as you get close to b. All right, so the next thing I want to say is, well, a function that's increasing uh, such that c is in that interval, then a function's continuous at c if and only if the jump at c should be zero. And so if you think about this, what if the jump from here to here, or in red, what if that's zero? Well, then there's no space here, right? There's no gap. Then this point is actually right there. So in other words, you don't have to pick up your pencil in order to draw the graph. There's no jump. So again, being continuous at a point is equivalent to saying that the value of the jump at C is equal to zero. So jumps are kind of cool. They can tell us about continuity. And so here's kind of a, a neat but kind of tough result. So if you've got a function that's monotone, and so I'm gonna do a proof in a minute where I assume F's just increasing, then the set of points D that are in the domain of your function at which your function's discontinuous has to be countable, so it can't be uncountable. So like you, uh, if you had say an interval of real numbers and you had a, a function that's increasing on it, then it's not possible for f to be uh, discontinuous at every single point inside of that interval. All right, so how would you prove such a thing? So let's say just in our case, right, again, I'm being a little bit abstract. I could be any interval. For my proof, it's gonna be the closed interval from A to B, and you could do something similar if you had you know, some other interval, like with parentheses, or maybe a parenthesis and a bracket. And then similarly here, I said F's monotone. Let's just do the proof when F's increasing. You could do something similar if F was decreasing. All right, so by the above then, uh, what is this? So D is supposed to represent the set of points in the domain where F is discontinuous. We'll call those the discontinuities of F. And so in that case then, if you think about the result, the result we just did right above it, well, you're continuous if and only if the jump is zero. Therefore, the set D of discontinuities, it's gotta be all the points where the jump is non-zero. I'm not saying it has to be finite either. So it's gotta be the points where again, the jump is non-zero. Okay, so F's increasing, what else do I know? I know that the jump should be uh, bigger than or equal to zero for every number that you were to plug into it, and assuming it exists. And so uh, further, what if I took just kind of a, a list of points in my domain that are increasing from left to right, so A all the way up to B, then let's think about the outputs of these things. So F of A, that should be smaller than, what if I added the jump at each one of these kind of intermediate points to that, right? I know that each one of those is a non-negative number, therefore adding that to f of a, this inequality should be true. But now maybe the tricky part that I claim is that adding the value of each of these jumps at these intermediate points to f of a, it's not gonna get you past any higher than f of b. 
So to maybe give you a picture of that, and maybe if I rearrange this step too, think about subtracting f of a over to this side. That's trying to say that if I added up all those little intermediate jumps, they should never ever get taller than f of b minus f of a. In other words, how tall your function is over the interval. And I've got a picture for you over here. So let's say I only drew a few of them out here, but uh, what I'm trying to say is if you were to add up the value of these red numbers, these red jumps, and maybe there's a bunch of them, what I claim is you're not gonna get anything more than the distance in yellow, than f of b minus f of a. So again, the sum of the jumps should be less than or equal to just kind of the, the height of your graph over your interval that you're considering. So that's something to kind of wrap your head around. And the next thing, so what does that tell me then? So if this has to happen, then that tells me that there can at most be k points in my interval, so maybe k numbers like x1, x2, blah, 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 up to xk, uh, such that though the jump of your function at that point is bigger than or equal to f of b minus f of a over k. So if there is more than that, then this would not be true. So like just to maybe say this, to draw this out a little bit, um, there's at most one point in the interval where the jump at x is exactly equal to f of b minus f of a. Similarly, there's at most two points in your interval where the jump at both of those two points is bigger than or equal to kind of the, the average of f of b minus, average is a funny word, f of b minus f of a over two. There's at most three points where the jump at those three points is bigger than or equal to f of b minus f of a over three, and etc. So what do we got then? There's at most a countable set of points where the jump is positive. And so D though, D has to be a part of the set. D is a part of the set of all points where the jump is positive. So in other words, D is a part of a countable set. Therefore, D itself uh, has to be countable.